are we as Republicans going to have press conferences and complain the border's bad and then intentionally leave it open? After the worst month in American history in December, now we've got to actually determine, are we going to just complain about things or are we going to actually address and to change as many things as we can? If we have the shot, and it's amazing to me, if, if I go back two months ago and say we had the shot under a Democrat president to dramatically increase detention beds, deportation flights, lock down the border, to be able to change the asylum laws, right. to be able to accelerate the process, no one would have believed it. And now no one actually wants to be able to fix it and says, I don't want to even debate it. I don't want to discuss it. That is conservative Republican from Oklahoma, James Lankford, calling out his own Republican colleagues for opposing the bipartisan border bill that he negotiated and helped to craft. As I've been telling you, even if this bill passes the Senate, the House Speaker, a Republican, has said this bill is dead on arrival in his chamber. And now some Senate Republicans are also starting to back away from it. The Republicans are formally saying they don't support this bill because they say it doesn't go far enough. But it's also true that support for this bill started to fall off after former President Trump suggested that the GOP should kill this bill so that President Biden doesn't get a win ahead of the election. Now, that is a very politically charged statement. And of course, politics, as I told you in this video, is now playing more of a role in this border issue than the actual policy included in the bill. That video tells you why it's happening. But this video is going to focus on the facts of what's exactly included in this bill so you can decide whether or not the House and the Senate should pass this thing and get something done at the border now or kill the bill and let the border and immigration stay exactly as it is until at least January of 2025. Now, the first fact you need to understand is we have a divided government. The Republicans control the House and the Democrats control the Senate and the White House. So it is literally impossible for either party to jam through a bill without compromise from the other side. It just can't happen. There must be provisions included in any bill that can appeal to both Democrats and Republicans if these lawmakers are serious about getting anything done. Okay, so is that crystal clear? Okay, you should also know that the Senate will take up this bill in a first series of votes starting on Wednesday. Now, let me tell you what's included. First, in all, this is a more than $118 billion emergency national security bill that includes significant border funding and major changes to immigration policy, but it also includes about $60 billion for Ukraine and $14 billion for Israel. There's also money for combating China's influence in the Indo-Pacific and billions of dollars for our own military and the efforts the Department of Defense is involved in around the world. Now, before I talk about the significant border policy in this bill, I want you to know, while the Ukraine funding has been an issue for Republicans in the past, that is not why the Republicans are opposing this bill now. They are solely opposed to this bill because of the border policy. So what is this policy? I'm gonna tell you about two of the biggest factors. The one that's received the most attention is this new trigger that would give the president the ability to close the border down in certain extraordinary migration circumstances. According to the bill, this authority may be enforced by the president if the seven day average of the migrant encounters reaches between 4,000 and 5,000 and must be enforced if the seven day average of migrant encounters reaches 5,000 or reaches 8,500 on any given day. Now it's important to understand the word encounter does not mean that a migrant comes to the United States illegally and then just released into the country. According to U.S. Border Patrol, the definition of the word encounter is the total number of migrants entering the United States illegally that are either claiming asylum or a migrant who entered illegally that is required by law to be detained or expelled from the country immediately. It's all of those things. So let me point out the presidential power to solely close down the U.S. border does not exist right now. The Constitution specifically gives Congress the ability to establish the rule of naturalization, which the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled means immigration, and which foreign nationals can enter and stay in the United States. That power does not lie with the president. But this new law not only gives the president that power at his or her own discretion, but also requires him or her to shut down the border when migration reaches a certain threshold. Now, sure, the president can form policies like former President Trump's Remain in Mexico policy, 
But that didn't shut down the border. Illegal migrant crossings continued, even when Remain in Mexico was in place. The law right now does give the president the power to place limits on asylum seekers, which both Presidents Trump and Biden have already done. And for the record, former President Trump did try to single-handedly suspend asylum between ports of entry along the southern border through a proclamation in 2018. But in the end, the federal court said that was unlawful. I say all of this to give you the context that this proposed presidential power to shut down the border in this new bill is a big deal because right now the power doesn't exist. And if it's passed into law, that power would apply to whichever president is in office, no matter if it's a Democrat or Republican. Now, speaking of asylum, this bill also makes it more difficult for migrants to claim asylum and would remove the courts from the appeals process, leaving the decision on whether the migrant can stay or go to an internal review board. It also raises the bar for migrants who say they have credible fear of persecution if they are returned to their home countries. It requires them to now show that they could not have simply moved Move to a different part of their home country to avoid this threat they're claiming asylum for. Migrants who can demonstrate a credible fear are let into the United States to live and work until their cases are decided on by an immigration judge and asylum officers can grant asylum on the spot to those demonstrating a dire need for protection. Again, there is so much more to this bill and we will see what happens on Wednesday, but remember, if this bill does not get passed, it is unlikely that anything will happen on the U.S.-Mexico border until a new Congress is sworn in after January of 2025.